All right, we're gonna watch Rotten Mango. Chat, I was telling you guys about the Epstein Island stuff. Y'all didn't want to listen to me, okay? So we're gonna watch Rotten Mango explain it, and I know you guys are gonna love her storytelling because it's one of the best, dude, okay? We are watching Rotten Mango talk about what really happened on Jeffrey Epstein's private island. Bada bing, bada boo. Bada bing, bada boo. If you want to live near the billionaires in Florida, you move to Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. The median home price there is $4 million. And Damn. most of these homes, they sit empty for three seasons out of the year. These are like the second, third, fourth, fifth family homes for the ultra wealthy. They're not even primary residences. Wow. So even from an early age in this type of area. Residences. Sorry, I love you, Stephanie. Yeah, it is utterly clear who's got it and who doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. They say that there's two types of high schoolers in Palm Beach. The ones that played with American Girl dolls and then the ones that played with Barbies. Uh -huh. American Girl dolls, if you don't know, they look just like a regular doll. You would not even know that it's an American Girl doll. They're iconic for having big doll heads. They can easily oh. cost upwards of $100 for a singular doll, a single doll. Mm. Wow. I don't even think it talks or anything. It's just a doll. So it's a high-end doll. Exactly. Barbies, you can find for less than $10. Mm -hmm. Nina went to a school where even Barbies, they were passed down. Mo hey, chat, if you had an American Girl doll growing up, hey, go ahead and give 100 gifted. Go ahead, toss that over here. I know you got it. <laughs> Let me see some. Most families at her school couldn't even afford more than one Barbie. Most of the students at Nina's school, they're on a discounted or free lunch program that's funded by the government. So they don't see that side of Palm Beach. They get a different side of Palm Beach. They don't have American Girl doll money. And 14-year-old Nina was one of the kids that didn't have it. I mean, at least for now. So her plans, she's going to stay out of drama in school. That's her mm -hmm. number one goal. Work a part-time job, make money, graduate with good grades, go to college, work hard, live near the water. That's the ultimate plan. She doesn't even have to live next to the billionaires, mm -hmm. maybe the millionaires. But sometimes when you avoid something too much, it comes in, it finds you. Nina I don't know about that. I've been avoiding drugs all my life. They never found me. Unless, like, I just... <laughs> a crack rock gonna open... <laughs> Yo, a crack rock is just gonna kick down my fucking wall. Just, oh, yeah! You know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck out of here. My fault. ...herself sitting in her principal's office with her hair all frizzy, her eyes are red, and the principal is screaming questions at her. Uh -oh. And the girl next to her, who looks like she's in just as bad shape, if not worse, and the principal screaming, what the hell are you guys thinking? We have strict rules against fighting. No physical violence is ever allowed on campus. Mm -hmm. Nina's looking at the girl next to her. She's rolling her eyes. And the two girls, they had fought over Nina's boyfriend. Ooh. I mean, this has been going on for weeks now. They were starting rumors about each other, shit talking, trying to flirt with the boyfriend Ooh. in front of each other. And today was just kind of a particularly bad day. They bumped into each other in the hallway, called each other all sorts of names like whore, skank. One student in the hallway Damn. screamed, cat fight, and everybody started joining in. And now... Both the girl's parents are called to the school, and one of the girls has a bloody nose. Damn, who Which, was it? I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal. Things happen. It's high school. But the principal decides to go Yeah, if I'm if I'm trying to make any anyone jealous, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, that's your boyfriend? I sucked his out of the locker room. <laughs> and then just run off. What you gonna do? It already happened, lady. You mad for what? You mad for what? Kenji, what? My fault. Go through both of their backpacks and in Nina's wallet, they find $300. Damn. Nina goes to a school where most students are on a discounted lunch or free lunch program. Where did she get $300? This is not a high school near the water where kids are given that allowance for the weekend. Mm -hmm. This is a school with a C rating. So the principal Why did she say, like, I went to, like, a... <laughs> Am I poor? <laughs> I thought that was normal. I thought free lunches was normal and no money was normal. Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> Dup asks Nina, where did you get this money? Nina doesn't respond. She keeps her head down. Nina was way too young to be... That was clear. Besides, the $300, they were in crisp $20 bills, not crumpled up lotion-covered ones or fives. Lotion-covered is... He's 14? 14. Maybe it's drugs. Nina's parents are like, well, it's definitely not us. She didn't get it from us. We didn't give her $300. We don't have $300 to give. 
Sunina's parents get to the school and they keep begging her to just tell the truth. Where did you get this money? It's okay. You're not going to be in trouble. Uh -oh. They wait and they wait for Nina to respond. She's crying and the words are starting to come out of her mouth and it's coming out faster than she can even think and they're all kind of jumbling together. I gave this old guy a massage and he paid me for it. It was weird and scary. He was really old. He had this white hair, but he was really fit, like some sort of jock and he was fully naked and I saw his wee wee and everything and then he just kept asking me to get naked and I told him no and then he wanted me to get on top oh, of him and massage him and he just kept rubbing his wee wee on me. Everyone is like, who? Because Nina is 14. They heard middle-aged man, naked, wee-wee. Who are we talking about? Who did this to you? Who gave you the money? His name is Jeffrey Epstein. No way. No way. What a way to start a video, bro. Oh my God. I'm sorry for talking. I apologize. Yo, Stephanie's the GOAT. The way she paints pictures is lovely. Well, not lovely in this but i'm just talking about like it's she really like reels you in and then like gets you go my fault i don't know what the i'm saying like the gets you going i mean like it's like a movie it's like oh sh what's happening how did she get the money oh sh she's poor where the f did she get the oh sh everything's coming out suspenseful that's what i was looking for thank you it, yes her, her storytelling is very suspenseful like it got you on your edge of the seat not in like a weird yeah you know, go f yourself dude we would also like to thank you guys for your continued support as we work on our mission to be worthy advocates of these causes mm. now as always full show notes are available at rottenmanglepodcast.com but a big thank you to james patterson john Connolly, and tim malloy the co-authors of filthy rich that sounds like i know them i don't this book was a big source for the information that that I was researching mm. for this case. We'd also like to say thank you to Vicky Ward for continuing to spearhead coverage on this ongoing development of all the court docs coming out. Mm. Victims' names, identifying information, and dialogue have been all changed for privacy. Even if authorities or the general public believe something is a fact, for the reason that there are ongoing legal disputes, we will be saying allegedly. However, our intention is not to cast down on victims' testimonies. In fact, some victims have bravely given firsthand public accounts Jeez. that can be found online if you would like to read the victim's testimonies from themselves. She got to say allegedly so she don't get sued. You know what I mean? Like that, like in a court of law, it could be like some defamation or some crazy stuff. You know what I mean? So you just got to be careful. Any and all theories mentioned in this entire episode are purely my speculation, netizen speculation, and things gathered from the internet. Now, with that being said, I also would like to make it very clear that all the details of today's episode can be found online. We are not investigative journalists and we have not gone directly to the victims or the sources. And if you ever feel in any episode that something was miscommunicated, misrepresented, or have any additional information you'd like us to know, please leave it down in the comments. Mm. With that being said, let's get started. The Metropolitan Correctional Center has a bit of a problem. I mean, the name sounds neutral almost, minus the correctional part, but the nickname for the building is Guantanamo of New York, federal prison located on the island of Manhattan. Mm. But that's not the problem. The bad marketing of being the Guantanamo of New York doesn't even face them. They don't care. It was the plumbing that was the issue. There was always a toilet in this prison that's overflowing with urine and fecal matter, Ew. sometimes straight into the prisoner's cells. It was never cleaned up properly because no one wants to clean up a prisoner's cell like that. So the entire building is just stinky. It's infested with rats and cockroaches. It's dark, it's humid all the time, and the smell makes your eyes water. Prisoners would show up to court. Your Honor, a rat ate my paperwork. They weren't even lying. The attorneys would be like, no, really, there is a rat problem, and the rats are eating our clients' paperwork from that prison. And in the south wing of this correctional facility, the setup was two inmates per cell monitored every 30 minutes by two guards who do rounds. These inmates get to shower once every two to three days. They have a singular hour of recreation time per day. That's it. And it's not like general population in prison where it's probably, I would say South Unit is more similar to maximum security. In the South Unit, there's only eight cells per tier and six separate tiers for the unit. Now, the- You lost me at multiplication. I was following the law just fine. What the f I had to bring numbers into it? I'm lost now. Inmates in South Unit, they're heavily watched. But you can just never be too safe. You can never be too sure in prison. August 10th, 2019, there was a problem in that prison. Okay. Inmate 76318054 refused to eat breakfast. Why? At around 6 a.m., 
Two guards, Noel and Thomas, they're going down the cold hallway, pushing breakfast into the cells. So they'd have this little dim sum looking card and they'd push the breakfast in and then go on to the next cell. Mm -hmm. And the two guards, they stop at this one particular cell where the inmate is refusing to come to the door and grab their meal. Hey, come to the door. Come to the door. Hello. No response. No movement. Mm -hmm. The guards, they look at each other. That's suspicious. And they decide, okay, we got to go in. They unlock the cell door. They rush in and they see inmate 76318054 suspended from the ceiling. Oh. Thomas starts lifting the inmate from under his arms, dragging him down to the corner of his cell. He lays him on the ground, starts performing CPR. He's like, breathe, breathe. You got to come on. We're going to be in so much trouble. Noel stayed near the door about one foot away from the cell and activated the medical emergency alarm. The radio start calling out throughout the entire prison, body alarm on south, body alarm on south. Jeffrey Epstein was pronounced dead at 7.36 a.m. August 10th, 2019, after spending 36 days in prison. The official answer is that Jeffrey Epstein, offender with dozens of allegations of child trafficking against him, could not handle the sound of the broken toilets and his impending future as mm -hmm. a prison inmate. So he self-exited. But people online, they have different theories. Uh-oh. One theory is that someone powerful on his so-called list of important industry and world leaders that he kept close by, they wanted him to die with their secrets. Another theory explores the idea that that's not Jeffrey Epstein at all. The man's almost worth a billion dollars. If he wanted to fake his death in prison, he could fake his death in prison. Mm. There are a lot of theories surrounding the very suspicious death of Jeffrey Epstein and a lot of questions. Who would want him dead? How would they even kill him if he's in prison? Was he running a trafficking ring for the wealthy? Were the ultra wealthy sacrificing children in rituals? And for some reason, all roads lead back to Epstein's private island. Oh, the ones that locals call Pile Island. Yo, Should having I? a whole island to do weird stuff is f insane. And matter of fact, yo, didn't they just come out with? I swear, I swear, I saw on Twitter. Why was um was it was it Stephen Hawking's the motherfucker in a in a in a like wheelchair? They'd be like, hello, my name is Stephen Hawking. He was on the f island. What the f was he doing? What the f is he doing there? I'm I got questions, buddy. Like, what is he over there? Bring that over here. Like, what the. F I'll push that motherfucker out his chair, dude. Don't you fucking touch me. My fault. I'm sorry. I got distracted. This joke about living in broom closets in New York City. I mean, how you can sit in your bed and then wash your dishes in the kitchen sink without getting up from your bed. Mm -hmm. That's like the running joke. But Jeffrey Epstein didn't live like that. Not in the Upper East Side. In the Upper East Side, there is a nine floor townhouse Whoa. that's 51,000 square feet. And at the Holy time, it was valued to be over $51 million. 51,000 square feet? It was one of the largest private residences in all of New York City. Holy The minute shit. that you walk past the 15 foot oak door, you are in fantasy land. You're not in New York City anymore. You're not in Manhattan. The entryway had these frames that were lined up on the wall, just hanging, each one individually framed. What do you mean? Like actual eyeballs? I believe they were synthetic. Huh. Yeah. Each one imported from England, eyeballs. So and that's artwork. Yeah. As oh. artwork, just eyeballs displayed. And you know how people say rich people are so eclectic. This is probably the embodiment of that. If you keep trudging forward in this massive Manhattan mansion, if you go a few steps, you stop, you look up, there's a giant sculpture in front of you, probably two, three times your size of a naked African warrior. What? It's a choice. Welcome to Jeffrey Epstein's world. And it said that he was a very particular man. It said that his morning was absolutely to the T, meticulously organized and very routine. Every single day, this was his morning routine. He would wake up exactly 6 a.m. He would spend 25 minutes in utter silence. All the house staff assistants, they all hold their breath. Shh. Silence. Pondering his life in oh, silence, meditating oh. until approximately 6.25 a.m. And then he slowly consumes his breakfast, a guava, a banana, a muesli, which is basically just a fancy oatmeal. Then what? he calmly gets up and walks a third of a mile, precisely 1,760 feet or 666 steps in his monogrammed $700 handcrafted slippers from Stubbs and Wutan. 
When he's done, he walks back home to his castle-like mansion in the middle of Manhattan, and he's got these little brass letters at the top of his door, and it reads J-E. Mm. He's got a thing for buying very expensive things and then making sure that everybody knows that he's the one that owns it. Sometimes he'll take these contemplative morning walks with two women, two very Dude, he's young. like actually a super, like I swear, people with too much money just turn into super villains or something. I swear to God, like there's only one road it leads down to. What is he rich for? I don't know. Beautiful woman, maybe 19 years old. The man's in his 50s. They'll be walking behind him a few paces back. If he stops to take a big old breath of air, they'll pause and just stand behind him. They never walk alongside him. It's always behind him. Mm -hmm. It's like they're waiting for him to hold out his palm and they'll hand him a eucalyptus scented towel or feed him grapes if he opens his mouth during his walk. That's the energy. Then he comes back home to one of the largest private residences in all of Manhattan, takes a shower. He doesn't drink any alcohol throughout the day. He doesn't smoke. He cares about every little thing that his body consumes and how sharp his mind is the entire day. Mm -hmm. He sits down at his desk, which allegedly JP Morgan himself used to own. Oh, wow. And gets to work. What's Whatever work is for Jeffrey Epstein, though, nobody really knew what this man did for a living. What kind of work? <sighs> But that particular day in New York, he had a very interesting meeting with someone, a journalist named Vicky Ward. Vicky. She was scheduled to come over and talk to him about a profile that she was doing on him for Vanity Fair. He arranged for her to be sat down in the leather room. It's his tea room. The walls are lined with this leathery fabric. The chairs are leopard printed. Dude, what the f is this? I'm sorry, bro. When, when people are rich, they just lose all sense of like, taste this sh is ugly bro you know what i mean like you're just like hey yeah this this chair right here was actually a bengal tiger from the ancient mountains of caucasus you know what i f mean like dude get the f out of here with this dude i'd rather an ikea set give me a cheap ikea table and, and, and a fucking bench and i'm good dude and he's got all these weird art yeah there's like a it's woman that's, i believe she's naked touching a lion skin He's got very fascinating art choices, and he wants to have afternoon tea with the journalist, the established, the very experienced Vicky Ward, mm. who has assigned this piece on him. Now, news had broken that there was a very, very wealthy, mysterious man who had taken a private jet ride to Africa with Bill Clinton. So everyone's like, of course right? we want to know who's on the plane with Bill Clinton. Why is this man on the plane with Bill Clinton? Vicky was sent out here, supposedly, to find out everything that she could about this mysterious... She said that word I usually say. Well, she said, like, how I would say it. Supposedly. My fault. Sorry. Supposedly, to find out everything that she could about this mysterious wealthy man. For an alleged reported billionaire who only hangs out with other fellow billionaires, presidents, and powerful families, dynasties. Nobody knows anything about this guy. He's not at galas. He's not at the Grand Prix or Art Basel. Like, nowhere. He's nowhere where rich people usually congregate. Mm. He doesn't even like eating in restaurants. He says eating in restaurants is like eating on a subway. What? Whether that means it's too cheap, too public, too vulnerable, or all of the above, it's very unclear. Epstein and Vicky Ward sit together in the leather room, and these men- Dude's a weirdo. He's like, oh, I can't eat with the peasants, these broke bitches. Oh, I can't do that. And then go talk to a fucking 14-year-old and try to diddle them. Like, what the fuck are we talking about, dude? Servants wearing white gloves gently place finger sandwiches and cups of Earl Grey tea on the table. Vicky is visibly pregnant with twins at the time of this tea party that she's investigating Epstein. And she's heard all these stories about this man, of him being a ladies man. All the women in New York are throwing themselves at billionaire Epstein, a true gentleman. One of the last good ones, how he's so smart beyond people's imaginations. He's the type of smart man that's not just good at business, but he can hold a conversation with Stephen Hawking. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder why. Chat, I wonder why. <laughs> Do you have any 12 year olds available? Like, get the f out of here, dude. Fucking weird ass motherfucker. Look at his bottom teeth. My fault. She thought it was an interesting description for a man who sat there and ate every single piece of finger food that was there for the both of them. They sit down. <laughs> he's, he has his manservants serve them finger food. He eats every single piece. Wow. It stated that on his office desk right next door to the leather room, Jeffrey Epstein kept a copy of The Misfortunes of Virtue, which is a book. Now, it's written by the same guy who wrote 120 Days of Sodom that we've talked about. 
It's a book about a literal 12 year old who gets essayed and is held captive in a monastery at Hell one point no. and is abused by groups of sadistic monks. Like it's very, very strange read. I'm sure there are groups of people out there that can argue that there is a lot of philosophical meaning behind books like these. And maybe no. I am just not able to grasp such intense, big concepts but it's seemingly dark for no reason. I read a good chunk of it to get a grasp on what it was about, and I have many regrets. It's just the story of a girl getting essayed over and over and over That's again, sickening. and it's just, I mean, it just feels like, it feels like torture explicit material. There's no purpose other than to get off on the torture, I guess. I don't know. I mean, these monks, they were tying her up, suspending her from the ceiling, stabbing- Yo, Stephanie, chill. We don't need deets. We get it. We actually get it. I don't want to hear about the book, bro. It's actually scaring me now. I'm getting scared. I don't like it. Knives into her arms and then catching her blood in buckets Ew. for pleasure. It's a lot. There's a quote from the book that reads, a woman can have no other relationship with her husband than that of a slave and her master. What? She certainly has no right to pretend to have any higher status than that. What? So that's the book that the journalist noticed. It's interesting because this was the only book that was out in view for the journalist when she walked in that house. There were no oh. other books left out. So it's not like, oh, she saw Jeffrey Epstein's massive, extensive collection of books, literature, and this is a book that she picked out to prove a point. He left it out on his desk, and that was the only book she saw. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Interesting. Jeffrey Epstein also they had They said it. They said it. Both of them said it. So I wanted to say it. Interesting. Say it with, say it with me, Jay. You want to say it with me? We could just have four people saying it. Interesting. Stephen Hawking, is that you? My fault. Stuffed dog. A stuffed black poodle. Dead and stuffed. Weird. On top of his so weird. grand piano that likely cost over $100,000. Oh, so it's like a r real dog that passed away. Yeah. And, okay. and then stuffed. Preserved. I mean, who is this man? He owned the largest private residence in Manhattan. He owned an $18 million ranch in New Mexico that he called Zorro. It was 33,000 square feet. Jeez. He owns a mansion in Palm Beach, an upscale condo in Paris, a house in Ohio. He owns a helicopter, a total of five planes, including a Gulfstream, a Boeing 727, which has a trading room, apparently. This is where President Clinton flew to Africa in. Two Escalade, six Suburbans, Jesus. two Ford F-150s, two Harley Davidson bikes, a Land Rover, a Hummer, a 34-foot boat, a 35-foot powerboat. I mean, Epstein was known for throwing these crazy private parties where already famous, influential, powerful people would be in attendance and they would shake hands with someone in Epstein's New York City townhouse. Oh, I'm Andy. Nice to meet you. Andy is Prince Andrew from the British royal family. Uh... So everyone's like, how? How does Epstein know Andy. I mean, Jeffrey Epstein seemed fake, like a caricature of a terrifying but weird billionaire. It stated that Epstein would be seen around town going to movie theaters. He would take three to four girls with him each time and they would take turns massaging him. What? Not just his shoulders, but like everywhere. His arms, back, legs, just in the middle of the theater. In the I'm, middle I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. It's weird, but that sound amazing. Like, I'm not saying like I want four is rubbing up on me and stuff while I'm watching a movie, but like imagine massage chairs in a movie theater. That'd be lit as fuck. I'll just be there just ah, can you pass me the popcorn? Ah, you know what I mean? True? Like what? Kenji, what the fuck? Bitch, are y'all dumb or did, can you not comprehend what I'm saying? I'm saying massage chairs in a movie theater would be fire as fuck. What are y'all talking about, dude? They have vibrating chairs at some theaters, don't they? Where the fuck? Do you lit? I swear, I'm a different tax bracket. Nay, you're outing yourself. You're outing a beep, 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 beep. You're rich, beep, 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 beep. You're rich. Like, what the f are we talking about? I never ever went to a movie theater. The, the most I ever got was they moved back. Not just his shoulders, but like everywhere. His arms, back, legs, just in the middle of the theater, in the middle of dinner, wherever. That's so weird. Wow. According to one source, Epstein would brag about going into is insane asylums because he, quote, liked to f crazy woman what we don't know if this is true but he bragged about it so needless to say it was going to be a very interesting meeting between the two the journalist oh, and sick. the supposed billionaire previously one reporter received three threats from epstein while they were working on a piece on him the message being i better like the piece and if i don't things are going to happen to you what a close friend of jeffrey epstein's once said 
Jeffrey has the unusual quality of knowing when he's winning, whether it's in conversations or negotiations. He always stands back and lets the other person determine the style and manner of the conversation or the negotiation. And then he responds in their style. Mm. Jeffrey sees it as chivalrous. He doesn't pick a fight, but if there is a fight, he's going to let you choose your weapon. Jeffrey Epstein wants to play chess with journalist Vicky Ward, not figuratively, literally. You be white. You get the first move. It's like he's letting her uh. pick her weapon. While playing, he probably had plans to talk about his love for science and how he's so close with Stephen Hawking. You know, he's friends so with weird. Nobel Prize winners, creators of virtual reality, NASA scientists. Those are his closest buddies. He would like to talk about how he's a philanthropist that's donated millions to Ivy League institutions to study the mysteries of our brains, how he believed in transhumanism, the science of improving the human population through technologies like genetic engineering and artificial intelligence. Side note, that sounds really fancy. It's not. Critics believe it's just modern day eugenics, which is controlled breeding of a population or species to modify their traits and strengths. Oh. Epstein, behind closed doors, would talk about how he wanted to bring in shipments of women basically to his New Mexico ranch, what? impregnate them with his semen and force them to have his babies. What? Well, I think the way that he phrased it would be that they would be more than happy to because he thinks that his gene pool is very strong. In a session at Harvard, Epstein said he Dude, was hypercritical of efforts aimed at reducing starvation and providing health care to the less fortunate because he believes that that would just lead to overpopulation. He's basically saying, let them starve to death. He probably didn't want to talk about all that with Vicky, though. OK, it would be a lot more fun to talk about how former President Bill Clinton's spokesperson had said about him. Jeffrey is both a highly successful financier and a committed philanthropist with a keen sense of global markets and in-depth knowledge of 21st century science. Or about how former President Donald Trump stated about him. Ooh. I've known Jeff for about 15 years. Terrific guy. He's a lot of fun to be around. That sounds like the type of thing Jeffrey Epstein would want to focus on. And I know that hindsight is twenty twenty. But if I were there, I would just want to know about what really goes on on his secret private island, Little St. James. Uh -oh. That's Epstein's island, but he likes to call it Little St. Jeff's. But the locals all call it Pedal Island. It's a 70-acre island in the U.S. Virgin Islands, which is south of Florida. It's about a three-hour plane ride from Jeez. Palm Beach, Florida, if you have a private jet, because I don't think that there's any direct nonstop flights from Palm Beach to that area. And it makes Jeffrey Epstein one of the very, very small group of incredibly wealthy people that own private islands, which buying a private island is kind of a headache. There's a professional agency called Private Islands Inc. that specializes in- Throw it all out. Hey, we don't need no more private. Throw it all out. I'll be honest with you. We're good. We're good. All right. We don't need no more. Exclusively in selling and renting out private islands around the world. But it's not even just buying the island itself that's expensive. Like if the what, island bro? has no wastewater treatment systems, working power lines, reliable source of fresh water, if there are no buildings on the island, or if you are renovating said buildings, you can estimate to spend at least two times the cost of that building that if you were to build it the same structure on mainland. And that's if your island is easily accessible. Some private islands, you have to build a dock yourself or even a runway for a private jet or a helipad. These are not affordable things. To put it into perspective, Richard Branson, founder of Virgin Airlines, mm -hmm. spent about a million dollars calculated for inflation on a private island. Jeez. And then he spent over $10 million so far to make it up to his standards and actually a place that he wants to visit. Like, why the would he Red even Bull do it, The owner though? bought a private island in Fiji for $10 million, and then he had to invest $30 million to make it more habitable. Like, you have to have Jesus. an entire team of staff that reside there just to make sure that it's ready for the very few days out of the year that you're actually there. They're going to be in charge of making sure the pantries are stocked, because guess what? You can't just go grab milk if you're on a private island. There's no grocery store. Some islands even have a doctor live there full time, even if- Genuinely just like imagine chat, motherfuckers is living paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. And you have billionaires just buying islands, dude. They just said that Jeffrey Epstein or whatever didn't even care about the problems of people starving to death, poverty, none of that. Like they don't fucking care, bro. It's bad chat. There's some evil people in this world, dude. It's crazy when you think about it, chat. If the owner only comes every one to two days a year, 
Because on a private island, there are no hospitals. In case of an emergency, you're going to want a doctor nearby. And as with any property ownership, there's still a ton of maintenance costs that are going to add up. Epstein bought Little St. James for about $15 million, which is calculated for inflation. He immediately went in there and started scrubbing the place. I mean, he's getting rid of all the native vegetation, started importing in 40 foot tall palm trees, which these are tall, matured palm trees. They can cost upwards of $5,000 per tree. And that's not including import and planting. That's per tree. He bought a ton of these palm trees. And at the time, the island already had infrastructure. There was this main house. Now, side note, the main house would reportedly be renovated by the same designer that did all the Amman resorts, like mm -hmm. the ones that all the celebrities go to. That's like $5,000 a night. Jeez. So we can imagine quite a bit of money was poured into the renovation. By 2019, the island's value was listed to be around $64 million. Besides the main house, the island has three guest cottages, a caretaker and a groundkeeper's cottage, a private water filtration system, utility what? building, a helipad, a dock, multiple swimming pools, tennis court, an enclosed lagoon, golf carts to take guests from place to place, a staff of 70 to cater to every guest's needs. This is actually you can tell cool. who's staff because they're forced to wear black or white polo shirts and they're told to stay out of everybody's view when they're working. Like, okay, don't that's be not seen. cool work hidden but the most interesting building is a square box building on the isolated part of the island oh, it's no. this it's the weirdest building i've seen okay imagine a square but it's blue and white stripes oh, no. it's got a gold dome at the top with two gold statues of what looks like almost like eagles or some sort of phoenix sitting there it looks like a temple and that's what Epstein calls it, his temple. Oh, it was no. on the most isolated part of the island. There are rumors circulating that he conducted sacrifices in there. That's where the children were taken for essay or to be killed. It stated that it was Epstein's private study and music room. One contractor said, actually, guys, it's not a weird sacrificial room. It's just a gym. But a lot of netizens don't agree. They theorize that this is either a sacrificial spot where rituals were performed, some sort of underground lair, Hell or even no. an altar for an Egyptian deity. Hell because next no. to that temple structure is this enormous sundial. It's probably the size of multiple swimming pools. It's, it's a giant circle. And obviously, it only adds to the theory that people are being sacrificed on this island. Now, one thing that we do know is that we don't know much about this island other than that. Mm -hmm. It is incredibly private. I mean, there's only one island near Pao Island, Little St. Jeff's, whatever you want to call it, but it's mainly empty. Nobody really lives there. Epstein would later buy that island too for $22.5 million, Jeez. which means this is either a man who really values privacy or he really does not want anyone to know what he's doing on his island. Mm. I think it's more of the latter because like some sort of Bond villain, Epstein purchased a ton of sea urchins. You know what sea urchins are, right? Like yeah. they, make, they make uni. The, uh -huh. They look like black balls with these incredibly sharp spikes all around them. He bought a bunch of these, scattered them throughout the edges of the island. Why? It would be physically painful for people to get to his island or leave his island without him knowing about it and helping facilitate it. Allegedly. He left booby traps like a super villain. This guy's a super villain. No, he's actually a super villain. He's leaving. Bro, what? I bet if it, like if real life was Minecraft, he would have like a lava pit around his little island or something, dude. You know what I mean? Like this guy's insane. But that's just the island. That still doesn't tell us what the hell happened on the island, especially when it's been reported and debated about how many powerful figures have been to that island. Uh -oh. Names like Stephen Hawking, Leslie Wexner, owner of Victoria's Secret and Limited Brands, uh -oh. Naomi Campbell, Prince Andrew, uh -oh. Bill Clinton, Donald Trump, their names have uh -oh. all been brought up and debated countless times of whether or not they have gone to the island. If they all went to the island, what are they all doing there? What do these people even have in common other than they're rich and powerful? Epstein would host these scientific conventions on the island. One of them was called Mind Shift, and they would just discuss neuroscience, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Another private island convention was called Confronting Gravity. He was going to bring in 20 of the top physicists from around the globe, including three Nobel Prize winners, and they would, through the conference, confront gravity and explore fundamental questions in physics. They wanted to determine what consensus, if any, is there for defining gravity like either i'm too dumb or maybe too smart because i thought gravity was not a debatable thing 
Epstein said about the conference, there is no agenda except fun and physics. That's fun with a capital F. Side note, Stephen Hawking does show up a lot in Hell no, the capital F is for f and they're f kids over there. F that. Lock them all up. Lock them all up. What the f got going on? Hell no. Kenji, nah, I'm just saying, bro. Like, why? first of all, is the list, did the list ever get released? Like, what's going on, bro? Because all these names that are allegedly being brought up, lock these thugs up. What the f are we talking about? We released court documents that we're going to go in more in depth on in the next episode on Sunday. But it seems like Epstein was obsessed with Stephen Hawking. He loved everything Stephen Hawking stood for. Uh -oh. The fact that Hawking theorized that the universe would stop expanding and collapsing, at which point time itself would start running backwards. He loved that. He loved it so much that Epstein gave Stephen Hawking the best gift of all. A oh. submarine that was modified to fit Stephen Hawking's wheelchair. Look at the fishies. My fault. Which was the first time Stephen Hawking was able to go underwater. This is so movie-like, it's crazy. James Patterson states it was one of the most romantic, generous gestures that Jeffrey Epstein has ever made. Stephen Hawking would be in the release court documents where a witness stated Stephen Hawking allegedly requested and stated that he wanted to watch people of short stature solve complex math problems on a very tall whiteboard that they could not reach. <laughs> What? Okay. What else was going on in that island? Are we really supposed to believe? Like what, bro? I don't trust none of these people, bro. Believe that they spent all their money to find one of the most secluded islands that money can buy, so that they can debate the concept of gravity and pin up whiteboards a little too high on the wall. I don't think so. There was no runway on that island. It was too small for a private plane to land. So Epstein would have to land his private plane at a bigger airport, his Gulfstream on St. Thomas, mm -hmm. then take his helicopter to his private island. Mm. Some locals on the main island would whisper that Epstein's private jet should actually be called the Lolita Express. What's that? Oh Every goodness. time that they landed to go to Epstein's private island, they said that Epstein was just surrounded by children, female what? children. Another local- What? And we just let this happen? They are just like, wow, that's one old man and a whole lot of kids. There they go. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? Dated, there would be girls that look like they are maybe in high school. They looked very young and they were always wearing college sweatshirts. It seemed like they were wearing it as camouflage to be like, I'm in college, I just look young but they're definitely not college age. They're definitely not old enough. Wow. Mm, so they're not even college, but they try- So they try to put on some fucking sweaters and like, oh, they're in college, they're old. What the hell? To be- Yes. Pretend they're in college. Yes. Wow. Another local said, I compare him to a serial killer in broad daylight. I mean, I just think he has the face of evil. And it's like he was flaunting it, like hanging out with all these underage girls just so blatantly. Other locals stated, the young girls look like they stepped out of an underwear catalog. They would walk around with very few clothes on or lounge by the pool with nothing on. And it's like, scary, they, they were like dude. that the most of their time. And I was concerned because of their ages. And a few of them looked very young. And I couldn't help but wonder, do their mothers know where they are? It has been alleged by a victim that the island was just step one of a web of trafficking for wealthy clients it wasn't just the island girls were sent to london paris spain everywhere around the world and on that island girls were forced into sexual acts by jeffrey epstein and his right hand woman Ghislaine maxwell now if you guys have Hell ever no. heard of epstein's case at all you've heard of Ghislaine maxwell i mean the two go together like they they did everything together this episode is focused mainly on jeffrey epstein mm -hmm. the very next episode that we're going to be uploading on sunday is going to be focused on Ghislaine maxwell oh, and how that. she was basically called his madam of this whole alleged trafficking ring because she actually like a was bonnie very and clyde of just like crazy shit going on and then yo chat what are the chances i just got an amber alert for child abduction emergency dude hell no bro like what is this world right now what is, what is the world with chat just be safe listen Please be safe. Yeah, keep yourself safe. Keep, make sure your family's good. I, cause this, I don't know what's going on with the world, but this is just crazy. Very involved and very allegedly abusive with many victims. She is said to be a ruthless woman. Uh oh. The victim stated they were forced to have intimate relations, not just with Epstein, but allegedly with other wealthy men from all different industries. It's been stated that some of these victims were just as young as 12 years old. Allegedly, Epstein would try and get the girls to be his little spies. He wanted intel and blackmail, not just on the girls, but on the other wealthy men that they were forced to sleep with. 
It's rumored that every inch of that island was being watched. There were cameras in cabanas, in the buildings, out on the patios. It was said that you weren't safe, not even in the restrooms. There were cameras in the restrooms. And if you try to escape, which we're going to cover in the next episode, someone tries to escape no way. the island, very, very bad things happen to you. There are a lot of theories about this island, satanic rituals, sacrifices, underground tunnels, and all of these theories will be fully explored in part one and part two. Good, bro. But just remember, this is the tip of the iceberg. A close friend of Epstein told Vicky Ward, the journalist that honestly tried to warn everybody about Epstein from the get go. They told her, you think you know Epstein. And then you peel another ring off the onion skin. And then there's something else extraordinary underneath. He never reveals his hand. He's a, he's a classic iceberg. What you see is not what you get. Rotten mango. Chad, this is so scary. I'm Korean and my husband is Chinese. So, of course... I'm, I'm mixed. I'm like a mutt, really, if you're asking me. I don't know if you're asking me, but... Hi. I can't eat. You let me. The tip of the iceberg started melting September 2005. The police pull over a young driver, a girl named Aria. This is a fake name. She has weed in her car. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot. It's not like she's the next El Chapo of Florida, but possession is still very illegal in Florida, so the police have to book her. Mm -hmm. Now, they're thinking this is going to be a very routine arrest, but at the police station, she starts talking, and she wants to talk to somebody higher up. They're like, why do you need to talk to somebody higher up? It's just weed. I have something that I think people would be interested in knowing. It's about a man named Jeffrey Epstein. Oh. Aria tells them that she knows Jeffrey Epstein, that she's been at his Palm Beach estate and she knows what goes on in that house. Oh no. So this is not his New York City estate with his eyeballs on the wall. Oh. This is a completely new house in Florida. To get into Jeffrey Epstein's Palm Beach estate, you have to get past the gate, past the guard, enter through the side door, which opens up to the kitchen. Usually there's a housekeeper doing dishes there. Then if you want to go upstairs, you take the winding staircase with pink carpets and you Weird. head up. Upstairs, the hallway is lined with photographs of naked women. And again, because it's a very expensive house, like $18 million, I guess you could say it's eccentric and not weird and serial killer-y. It's up for debate. The house itself has this weird edge of coldness. Not in the billionaire, lair, evil Tony Stark kind of way, but some parts of his house seem like a hospital. Some guest rooms almost look like doctor's what offices. The fuck? Then perhaps you walk straight into Jeffrey Epstein's bedroom. The whole room seems off. There are these hospital-looking machines next to his bed. What? It's like some it's torture likely room. for sleep apnea, but they look intimidating. You've got a massage table in his bedroom. You've, there's this wooden cabinet on the side that's filled to the brim, like bursting with rubber toys and just adult toys. The whole cabinet. Oh. Next to his bed, Jeffrey Epstein has peach-flavored joy jelly lube. In the bathroom, there's soaps shaped like private parts of... Yeah, all the different private parts. Dude, these people There's are more bottles of joy jelly, peach flavored, mango flavored. You open the door into his closet and inside his dressing room, there's more photographs of women, of girls that all came to his house. They all look incredibly young and most of them are nude. Hell He's no. got DVDs, strictly B-list movies for some reason, stacks of UFC fighting tapes, books from Amazon. One is titled Slave Craft, Roadmaps for Erotic Servitude. Which is otherwise, I'm sure, a perfectly fine book, but it's Epstein, so I'm not sure he's using it as intended. There are two secret cameras hidden in clocks on the first floor in his office. Most of the girls in that house don't even know about it. Wow. Jeffrey takes pictures of them through those cameras and keeps them on his hard drive. And the whole place has this overwhelming, sickly lavender smell to it all. Ew. Can we, like... Where Where is the list and where is all this evidence? Because I feel like if we get his hard drive and just look at it, we'll probably see like every crazy sh that happened, bro. The first time, most girls are led into a room that has a green and pink sofa. Next to it is another giant wooden cabinet that's filled to the brim with toys. There's a mural of another naked woman inside the room. A massage table is in front of the couch. And most girls are led up there by another young woman, an assistant. Ooh. Just wait right here. He'll be up in a minute. There's a sense of fear and nerves when it's the first time because it's just a massage, right? Like you just give some guy a massage and you get paid for the massage. I mean, everything in the room clearly indicates that it's not a massage though. There's photographs of young women posing naked. I mean, one of them shows a girl that's clearly not of age and in the photo she's smiling, but there's this strong undertone of anxiety on her face and she's nice. pulling off her undercarments while smiling at the camera. It's just weird. 
Aria was starting to feel a little bit on edge. It was her first time there. She was honestly just there because Hollister's pay is not great. Hollister pays like $6 an hour. And she had all these plans to go camping with her friends this summer. And she was telling her coworker about it. And the coworker is like, oh, you're trying to get plane tickets? You're not going to get that at here, $6 an hour. I can get you a plane ticket like that in Uh-oh. two hours. What are you talking about? Oh, you just go give this guy a massage and he'll pay like $200 for 45 minutes to an hour. She didn't give oh, Aria friend. any other details. That was it. But Aria was not naive enough to think that someone would just pay $200 for a massage. She said, you know, like this guy's not going to pay you money for not doing anything, not letting him cop a feel or nothing, you know? But he could try all he wanted. I mean, she would just turn it down. She thought, if he tries to do something that I have a problem with, I'll just leave. Simple as that. And if not, if he doesn't do anything, then I make $200. $200 is $200. Aria went with the friend from Hollister. Uh She was brought into the kitchen where she met Sarah, who she later found out was, quote, like one of Jeffrey's slaves, Uh end quote. Jeffrey Epstein would pick a few girlfriends to live with him, and they, some... It really depends on, I guess, how you look at it. I've seen some victims and some sources depict these women as perpetrators. And then I've seen some depict them also as victims who ended up becoming perpetrators, but probably because they were already victimized to a degree. It's very complicated. But a lot of the girls would say they're like his slaves. So they would live in his house and they would do everything for him. They would walk behind him during his morning contemplative walks. They would never really look up or talk without being asked. Yeah, it was a thing. The woman tells Arya, he'll be ready for you in a second. Arya was led upstairs past the strange paintings and into the primary bedroom where there was a couch in the bathroom. And she's like sitting in the bathroom couch. I mean, it was huge, the bathroom. There were bottles of lube, massage oils, weird medical looking devices that you would normally see in like a dermatologist's office. It's just creepy. It was not a place that you would want to be alone in. But Arya's not alone. She's got her friend from Hollister there. Then a middle-aged man walks into the room, walks over to Arya, shakes Uh-oh. her hand. Hey, I'm Jeffrey. Then he turns to her friend from Hollister, hands her a wad of hundreds, what? and Arya is pissed. Her friend was getting paid to bring Arya here. Wow. Worse is that her so-called friend is leaving her. She tells Jeffrey, great, I'll wait for you downstairs. Turns to Arya, see you in a little bit, and runs downstairs. What? Wow. Wait, so the friend was getting paid? Yes. Hundreds of dollars. Like $200 for each referral. Aria feels like she's got no choice but to give this guy a massage. So she starts massaging him with the massage oils and he just keeps whining, take off your skirt. She's like, no, but he keeps going. Come on, you're not showing anything just by taking off your skirt. He ends up pressuring her into it, which is illegal because she's 16. But regardless, he talks her into it and she takes her skirt. Then he forcibly starts touching her. She tries to tell him to stop, but he keeps going and demanding that she now take off her shirt. In the end, Arya felt pressure to undress, but she kept her undergarments on. He kept groping her chest area, then finished by wiping himself off on a towel. So he was like self. He paid her $300 and she went home after 40 minutes. And just to put a quick disclaimer here, I'm using words given to the officer by Arya, but I don't think that he talked her into it or convinced her. I would consider it straight up force. She's 16. He's a middle aged man. It's illegal. So even if he, quote, talked her into it, it's Yo, still- Yo, um, Stephanie, you don't even got to explain it. That mother is a p- Like what, bitch? Fucking freaky ass, weird ass mother Chop his dick off. Oh, he's already dead. Never mind. Illegal. Second, $300 for 40 minutes. In many professions, that would be considered an incredible job. But this is not a job. This is illegal. And the girls were way too young to realize how traumatic those 40 minutes would be and how it would stick with them for the rest of their lives. But he knew that. He exploited that. Aria was 16. From there, Aria told officers that she frequently visited Epstein's mansion and gave him massages. She stated that she was there every day that he was in Palm Beach, and she had been there at least hundreds of times. She had some rules that she set with him. And again, none of this matters because she's underage. So even if she's setting rules, this is illegal. Aria stated Epstein told her that she was his favorite. He ended up buying her a new car bought her plane tickets for trips, gave her shopping money. Sometimes she would go over to his house and there would just be a giant bag of lingerie from Victoria's Secret just waiting for her, like $1,500 worth of stuff. He even asked if she could ask her parents to emancipate her so that she could come live with him. Wow. As a girlfriend, the police ask. 
slave, whatever you want me to call it. Yeah, but it escalated. He just increased my pay as long as he could touch me. She said, I used to go there every day. Like, I don't know how many other girls he was saying, you're my favorite too, but I want you to live with me. But I was in as deep as you can get. She stated, the underwear I'm wearing right now, he gave me. Authorities asked and clarified, and for some reason, we have very, very vivid details about his private part. Aria told authorities, because they kept asking, oh, yeah, I'm 110% sure he's circumcised. As a matter of fact, he has some sort of birth defect on his thing. What? I don't know what it is. I've never really looked into it because I've never done anything where I had to touch it. Out of the whole time I worked for him, I never touched his thing. I'm pretty sure he rubbed it against me, but I've never been like, okay, I'm going to let you do this or okay, I'm going to do this now. But it's really weirdly shaped. I don't know. Do you want me to tell you about it? Yes. I'm really embarrassed, but uh, it's like a teardrop, like a drop of water. It's like really fat at the bottom and really skinny at the top where Ew. it's attached and it never is like fully stiff. Like I could just tell by looking at it. I don't know. Like by looking at it, you can obviously tell if it is. I, I could tell that he wasn't. Aria told authorities that sometimes Jeffrey Epstein would call her over to the house and ask her to be completely naked while he worked. So she would be paid to just sit on his desk while he worked completely naked and watch TV or read a book or just be naked in the room. Other times he requested that she be naked in bed with him while he watched the news. And I just real quick, I just want to say like, bro, how like deranged, first of all, I mean, obviously he's deranged, right? But like, dude, sex is not that like, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. It's not like the end all be all of life, dude. Okay. Like, why does everything need to be sexual? Like, bro, it's such like a small part of life. Like, get the fuck on, bro. Like, you're so sick. You can't, you're like, you're, you're praying. It's fucking disgusting, dude. These people are godless. Go fuck pray you piece of shit. or other times he would just have her join him for dinner it wasn't always a massage but aria said she would never be in that house if there wasn't money involved then one day he forced her over the massage table and forced himself on her Jesus. she said that she quote freaked out and stopped him but he r-worded her even if it was just for a moment now side note i want to clarify that she clarifies with the police that she never had intimate relations with epstein and she did not but he did try to r-word her even if for a moment or two and i say that because he was victimizing her. She was so young when she was giving her statement to the police. I don't think that it's settled in yet because there was a really heartbreaking part of her questions with the police where she just kept asking, wait, is this like our word? I mean, Jeez. it's just my opinion. I think he's just a raging predator. Now, side note, Jeffrey Epstein knew Arya's real age as well. She told him that she was 16 and he told her, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody your real age. And from there, things just started escalating. Epstein would pay Arya to have relations with another woman, one of his girlfriends who lived at the house. And either they were all underage at the time. Oh or my she had God, just I'm sorry. In. I'm allergic to weird motherfuckers trying to do weird stuff bro teen it's uncertain he would watch as they had intimate relations with each other sometimes he would join in by doing things to the two of them aria stated that there was a lot of usage of strap-on devices and other large oh, rubber no. objects he had a whole cabinet at his disposal of things that he would use during these massages she stated Jeffrey Epstein was a mastermind at getting people to do what he wanted. She stated, he's a very hard guy to say no to. I don't know if you guys ever talked to him, but well, if you talk to him, I mean, he straight up tries to control the situation. Every word that comes out of your mouth, it seems, it seems like he knows what you're going to say. Like, Jeez. that's his job. That's how he makes his money. Knowing what people are going to say and what people are going to do. The only reason that I held on for so long was because he promised that he would get me into NYU and that he would pay for it. So I waited and I waited and I scored great on my SATs. I had a 4.0 GPA. I did really good in school. I gave him my application three times. He never submitted it or checked it. Wow. That's why I stayed so long because my dream was right in front of me. You know, did he ever hurt you? Sometimes it got violent, yeah. He would uh, pick me up. Like, if you pick me up and throw, obviously it's gonna hurt. I mean, there's been nights where I walked out of there barely able to walk from him being so rough. So to recap, Aria was pulled over, arrested for having weed in her possession, brought into the station, and the police thought this was a routine arrest. But now they've uncovered that Jeffrey Epstein, one of the richer men of all of Palm Beach, is actively seeking children for sex work? Aria looked Hell at the no. detective near the end of the interview and she said, Jeffrey's going to get me. 
you guys realize that he's gonna find me he's gonna figure this out and he's gonna i'm not safe now you understand that right i'm not safe do you know what the golden rule is oh it's very simple he who has the gold makes the rules mm -hmm. and in palm beach there's a lot of rule makers to give you an idea their local newspaper the palm beach daily news the front page news for them is usually the most recent charity ball or equestrian horseback riding event or some sort of gallery opening it's a place where nothing really happens and everything happens and there is a busy time even for the police they call it quote the season winter time in palm beach that is when all the rich billionaires with their fifth vacation vacation homes come into the town they leave snowy new york rainy paris come to palm beach where the temperatures sit comfortably in the 70s and they throw millionaires bro F millionaires i'm mad at them I'm, i don't even care i'm just mad i'm poor i'm getting tired of it dude i'm tired of being tired i'm oh I see. lord lord please listen to my words if you give me a billion dollars i promise i will help people out and also i won't do anything weird i'll just sit here and I just stream some more do some giveaways and help people thank you lord for listening to my prayers parties it is the season the billionaires come in fly in on their private jets fly in all their friends from around the world they throw these over-the-top parties endless bottles of dom the ones that cost like hundreds of dollars per bottle there's shrimp towers hired entertainment noise complaints someone hung over believed to be dead there's a 911 call cocaine usage through the roof and once these parties are over the workers come in clean up the billionaires mansions leaving it completely spotless, even though they know and the billionaires know that they're just gonna do it all over again tonight. Wow. And everything, all that trash, ends up at the landfill that the sanitation workers call Mount Trashmore. Mm. Everyone's trash, except Jeffrey Epstein's. His trash was being secretly pulled by the Palm Beach Police Department after Aria oh, and after Nina's reports. It's called a trash pull, where authorities secretly work with sanitation workers and have a special place for intaking a suspect's trash, like all of it, and it goes to the police station and sorted through for important evidence. In this case, they're looking for anything that has DNA, toothbrushes, condoms, half-eaten pizzas that can even place underage girls in the house, or any other incriminating evidence, notebooks, journals, pieces of papers with names, phone numbers, uh -oh. dates, anything that can connect Aria or any other underage girl for that matter to jeffrey epstein billionaire or not the police are determined they're gonna get this guy w cops they just need to make sure that the investigation is kept tight under wraps the door to the police station swings open and oh, a no. silver-haired man walks in oh no it's jeffrey epstein and oh. behind him is a beautiful but very young woman 19 years old barely a woman and she's walking behind him a few paces back the other girls call her another one of, quote, one of Jeffrey's like slaves, end quote. She's one of the girls that lives in his mansion. She's walking behind him, head down, staring at the ground. And all the officers are staring because it's such a strange, alarming sight. It looked like she's used to not talking or even making eye contact unless she's addressed, which can never be a green flag. Jesus. Jeffrey walks up to the chief, Chief Ryder. He introduces himself as a local Palm Beach resident, Jeffrey Epstein. He does, he does not introduce the woman behind him. It's like she doesn't exist. And he hands the chief a check for $90,000. What? Whoa. A donation for a firearm simulator, which kind of, if you guys don't know what that is, it looks like screen golf, but instead of a golf club, you use a replica firearm and you practice your aim, reflexes, and stamina. A lot of wealthy Palm Beach residents donate to the local police department because they have a lot that they want to protect and they want to make their already safe town even safer. And they think this is the best way to do it. He's I didn't driving know you could the just cops. walk into a police station and hand them a check. Yeah and be not not be arrested for bribery oh, yeah like that's insane we should just hand them a dollar check and test it out it's crazy <laughs> that's not a conflict of interest like yeah. what what that's definitely not bribery for sure right but even for one of the wealthiest zip codes in the state ninety thousand dollars in a donation is a pretty big deal <laughs> chief Ryder, he'd been a cop for more than 24 years i mean he was trained for anti-terrorism at the fbi training headquarters quantico but mm -hmm. he's also a family guy and he could just tell he could just tell that something is off about jeffrey epstein 
and ninety thousand dollars was entirely not enough to make him feel different. The authorities have a report of something that sounds very much like the R word from Aria, but it's not enough to get someone of Jeffrey Epstein's caliber. I mean, we hear about normal people getting away with essay all the time. Now add a few hundreds of millions of dollars, if not a billion into the mix, Jeffrey Epstein is practically He's a untouchable. Super villain. Chief writer even warned his squad, cross your T's, dot your I's, Epstein's attorneys can eat us for breakfast, lunch, and dinner if that's what they want to do. And if you're going up against someone like that, which is what the police have every intention of doing, you have to know everything about your opponent. You don't go into a fight blind, and they know nothing about Jeffrey Epstein. For a very rich guy, he's incredibly mysterious and private. Nobody even knew what he did for a living. I mean, yeah, the police can figure out through tax filings, but what does that even mean? What does he really do for a living? Mm. He has a corporation. He helps rich people. That's all they know. How does Jeffrey Epstein make his money? Mm. According to some people, Jeffrey Epstein would go around telling people that he was a brain scientist. What? Is that even a real job? He would say, it's my job to know how people's brains work. So yes, it's all very elusive. Mm-hmm. But one thing is for certain, it is highly unusual for animals that big to not leave any footprints in the snow. Only problem is, Jeffrey Epstein was born with very, very small feet. At least in the fight. Okay, Stephanie, what the f*** does that mean, dude? That was a real Kanye tweet right there. Like, I don't know if she's storytelling, but that just pit That was like on the equivalent of like how much, like this, this is literally what it felt like. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That felt like a conversation between Kanye and Kobe Bryant. Where is it? How much more do you want from me? More. How much more successful do you want me to be? More successful. How many records can my records break? More records. But, but I'm the best. But are you a different animal and the same beast? <laughs> what the f does that mean, Kobe Bryant? <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> like, what the, f what the f does that mean, Stephanie? Stephanie, what the f does that mean? Sometimes, bro, sometimes she just be, I don't know what the f she be saying, bro. What the f <laughs> Only problem is, Jeffrey Epstein was born with very, very small feet, at least in the finance world. Jeffrey grew up in Brooklyn where his dad was a landscaper, which I just want to say there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It does appear that he comes from a loving home, but it is a world away from the Upper East Side and the old money New Yorker societies. But it is a world away from the Upper East Side and the old money New Yorker societies that he wants to be a part of. But Jeffrey Epstein is unfortunately very smart, at least on paper. He skipped two grades. He was a genius with numbers, they said. He played the piano. His friend said he was advanced. He's brilliant. Mm. He's a diamond in the rough. He's got a gift for recognizing opportunities very quickly. Interestingly enough, Jeffrey Epstein had a lot of friends growing up, and they would call him um, Epi. His parents would call him Bear. Epi. At school, they'd call him Epi. Apparently, he was very likable. So they said, you know, have you ever heard someone who laughs like, ha, 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 ha? Or they just kind of laugh like that noise. They said Jeffrey Epstein laughed like, he, he, in a very high-pitched voice. Like, he would have a he, he laugh, which honestly is a little creepy. Now it's that mad I think about creepy. It, but... <laughs> A lot of kids, you know, when you're young, they thought it was cute. They thought it was enduring. Jeffrey Epstein was described to be chubby with curly hair and an obsession with his prized stamp collection and his grades. I mean, Jeffrey Epstein goes from Brooklyn to the Upper East Side at least Monday through Fridays. And he starts teaching at a prestigious private school in New York City called Dalton School. Whoa. This isn't even a university. Dalton is a K through 12 grade school. The tuition per year is $61,000 a year. This is not even a private university. Bro, can you believe that there's actual tuition for private? Like, what is going on? There's different. I went to public school. I'm going to be complete. I thought free food was like it. You know what I mean? Like, I thought that was just like basic. Dude, there's people going to like like college fucking dorms and, and just fucking, uh, what do they call it? Campus. Thank you. I said campus. I'm dumb. Listen, they got college campuses as fucking just like grade school. And, and you're paying mad money for tuition. It's crazy, bro. My baby, bro, he went to like this private school. I swear to God, the gym. First of all, the gym by itself was just insane. It was like a fucking, like, I don't even know, like an MLB lifting room or some shit. It was wild, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. And I'm like, dude, I got some fat 
asshole telling me to run around a track some more. You know what I mean? That making me do push-ups and shit when that motherfucker look like he never got out of his chair. Like, get the fuck out of here. I hate it here. My fault. I'm sorry. Crazy. Epstein doesn't even have a college degree, and he ends up as a teacher of math and physics over at Dalton. And nobody was taking parent-teacher conferences as seriously as Epstein was, because that is his chance to be in the same room with these rich, powerful, well-connected parents without formally pitching himself and annoying these influential families, because I'm sure they get that all the time. I'm sure they get Shark Tank pitches on a daily basis. Epstein shows up to these teacher conferences and shows them exactly how valuable and brilliant he is. And it works. Whoa. One of the dads leans over during a parent-teacher conference. Have you ever heard of Bear Stearns? Bear Stearns was a massive investment bank, trading, and brokerage firm. By 2008, it was the fifth largest investment bank in Manhattan. It did collapse that same year, so I don't know what that means anymore. In 2006, they did $9.2 billion in revenue. Jeez. They had a giant 47-floor glass-down skyscraper in the middle of Manhattan. The traders did lines of cocaine in the bathroom. I'm not even making that up. There was a guy from Bear Stearns who had a dispenser that had the emblem of bear stearns what i mean the firm clearly they had branded that's kind of gangster bitch. i'm not gonna lie to you hey come work from mcdonald's you want some mcdonald's bitch? you know what i mean come look at this little pill Fuck you talking about i don't know bro that'd be cool as operated in very interesting ways even when hiring traders the partners were not looking at resumes and diplomas some of the partners would straight up say i'm looking for psds What's that? Poor, smart, determined kids. Mm. PSDs. Jeffrey Epstein was a PSD when he joined Bear Stearns. He starts trading and sleeping with one of the partner's assistants immediately, and he is exposed to a whole new world of money. At these firms, money is no longer even money. It's just numbers on a screen that go up and down. When it goes up, you're happy. You make money. When it goes down, you're sad. You do another line of and you get back at it. Damn. After five years there, Epstein takes his $250,000 bonus that year, resigns from the firm conveniently right before the SEC starts an investigation into Bear Stearns, which is suspicious to say the least. Mm. He was questioned multiple times by the SEC. And from there, Jeffrey Epstein finds himself being a bounty hunter. Mm. Jeffrey Epstein's real taste of money, like first real taste, because to him, a quarter million dollars is not real money. It's not enough. He actually blew through it so quickly that he had to stay on people's couches. He didn't even have a place to stay. His first real taste of money was through a woman named Anna Obregon. And she's this beautiful Spanish actress, model, Hi, socialite, Anna. and normally very, very wealthy. But her dad was about to be out hundreds of Hi, millions of dollars, Anna. potentially. We don't have an exact figure, but Anna's dad invested in a scheme. And now his money is at risk of being gone forever. So Anna reaches out to Jeffrey Epstein and is like, hey, I heard you're good with numbers. I heard you're good with tracking things down. I need you to help my dad hunt down my dad's money. If you recover at all, I'll give you a good chunk of it. A bounty hunter. Epstein worked with the SEC Fraud Task Force, probably the same task force that investigated Bear Stearns and Jeffrey Epstein by default. And now he's on their side, trying to get Anna's money back. And it worked. He found her family's money being held in a bank in the Cayman Islands, and it's unclear how much money he recovered, but it's suspected that Anna gave him a hefty commission, likely in the seven figures. This is Jeffrey Epstein's first taste of big boy money, and he's not going back. It's argued Epstein did have a way with numbers. He was really good at it. He would use it to find ways for the ultra wealthy to not pay taxes. That is what Epstein genuinely did. Tax evasion. Wow. His whole business model was pay me $50 million or pay the IRS 10 times more than that. Damn. So I'm going to find it's not tax evasion. I guess there are legal loopholes. Jeffrey Epstein seemed to have this lifelong habit, though where he would promote his girlfriends. He would somehow date some of the most beautiful women in the world, not even subjectively, but literally objectively. He dated Miss Sweden for a while. He would date these incredibly beautiful women. I mean, they're oh. completely out of his league. And then he would promote them to be his friend. Mm. He would break up with them, but he always told them, no, 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 think about it like this. You're going up the ladder. You're not going down the ladder. You're graduating to a better tier. You're moving from lover to friend. That is better. Relationships are nothing. This There's motherfucker, I need to start gaslighting bitches like that. I'm not going to lie to you. 
No, no, baby, baby, listen, listen, I cheated on you, but that don't mean I don't love you, bitch. Okay, that just means now we, we aren't a thing, you know what I mean? And now we're friends. And what friends means is we could get McDonald's on me. Let's go get a chicken nugget. Come on, girl, stop playing with me. There's beautiful hot women all over this island. Friendship is precious. That's how he always framed it. And it worked. Epstein would remain close with all of his ex-girlfriends. One wow. of his ex-girlfriends stated, there is nothing but nice things that I can say about this guy. Even an old high school girlfriend remembers getting a call from him out of the blue. This is both when they're in their 50s. They dated like, what, 30 years ago in high school. He calls out of the blue without talking to her for decades. And he's like, you know what? You came up in a conversation recently and I was just thinking about you. He's like, yeah, it was, um, it was my birthday party, my 50th birthday party, and I had all these pictures of me when I was younger, and, you know, because we dated, I had a picture of you on the beach, and my friend was pointing at your picture, and I thought, I bet she's got a big ass now. What? <laughs> you want to come over? No and after way. decades of not talking, she went over to his Manhattan mansion, and it's like nothing had changed. Friends forever. Now, one of Jeffrey Epstein's longest relationships, though, was with a man named John A. All right, I know he's a piece of shit, but I'm using this. That's game. Game is game. I'm not going to lie. I'm gaslighting the bitches I'm talking to. We all going to be best friends forever. I'm going to hit him up in a few years and just be like, hey, you trying to fly out to L.A.? You know, I'll, oh, your name just came up in conversation. I bet you got a fat ass, girl. Come over here. Stop playing with me, girl. You try to come over. Come on. Like what? First class. First class. On Spirit Airlines. I'm lying, man. She's gonna get her ticket mad as hell. My fault. This is a fake name. He was Jeffrey Epstein's houseman for 11 years. As the main houseman, John was also the house manager, the driver, the house maintenance person. He mainly stayed in the Palm Beach house. And his job was to make sure that anytime Jeffrey was at home, it was ready for him. If anyone had a firsthand look into what went on in that house, it was gonna be John. He said, yeah, I mean, I think Jeffrey was probably very sore. Because he received three massages per day. Damn. Three massages by three different women per day. And every year, those masseuse, they got younger and younger. And they would always be led up to Epstein's room or bathroom Ooh. where he would have a massage. But sometimes, John would go in there afterwards and find these long rubber devices or massagers that Ooh. would be in the sink that he would have to wash off and put back into the wooden cabinet. This motherfucker is so nasty, he can't even wash it off. You don't have no decency to clean up after yourself, you dirty bitch. I'll be that I'll be mad as hell. I'll be mad as hell if I work there. I gotta clean up some little nasty ass long ass be mad as shit. Harrison to all of that. This new errand that he was sent to run, it seemed very easy. All he had to do was drop off flowers to one of Mr. Epstein's girls. He thought it was gonna be the easiest task in the day. Mm -hmm. Until he found himself with a bouquet of red roses in his hand, standing in front of a high school. What? Red roses oh for 15-year-old Nina. What? Nina, from the beginning of this story with $300 in her wallet, she had to sit on her hands on the way to Jeffrey Epstein's mansion. She was wearing a white pair of skinny jeans and she did not want to get it dirty in Wendy's truck. The seats are grimy. I mean, honestly, this whole situation felt grimy, but it's I'm not so even- I'm so sorry, who's Wendy? Wendy is the girl that's introducing her to this rich man who takes massages. Ah, uh, her friend, I see. Wendy is actually her boyfriend's cousin, and okay. she's sitting on her hands in the back, and it's just, yeah, it's this just is not insane. a pleasant situation. But if someone asked you, would you rather work part-time at a fast food chain, sweating over burgers in the back, getting greasy, your hair's all sweaty, to make $300 you smell when you get home, or would you rather close your eyes, massage an old rich guy for an hour, and make that same amount of money? Chat, which one are you doing? i am be honest, I suck in the back of a Wendy's parking lot, if you gonna give me two hundred dollars, it could be it could be an old man, it could be a, it could be an old woman, it could be whoever the fuck, Kenji. I'm just saying, I would probably like I'm so happy because I'm a dumb person, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. I would I, for sure if I was like, a, well, even if I was a girl, I feel like I'd be ugly as. Shit. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I feel like I'm a pretty good looking guy, but like as a girl, like I have a sister and she's cool, she cool, you know what I mean? I, I feel like it just wouldn't work for me. You know what I mean? It, just, it, it wouldn't work for me. I would just have to pray and hope I got a fat ass or something, dude. When you're 16, 15, 14, I mean, even when you're not, it seems like the choice is kind of easy. 
Nina doesn't really have a choice now. She's in the back of Wendy's car, hands numb. The GPS is leading them straight to an $18.5 million mansion overlooking the water in Palm Beach. And Wendy, her boyfriend's cousin, the one that's introducing her to the man, is glancing in the rearview mirror. Nina, remember, when he asks how old you are, you say 18. You got it? Nina's kind of confused because no. nobody in their right mind would think that she's even 18 or 17 or 16. She's 14. Hell no. Um, 14 or 15? She's 14. Oh my goodness. Uh, sure. I'm serious. When the man asks your age, you say 18. Yeah. Hell I got it. no. Nina smiles at Wendy in the rearview mirror and the car pulls up to the front gate. It opens up for them. They park in the driveway and they walk up to a guard. Wendy's acting like she's doing a drug deal. We're here to see Jeff. He nods, and they follow him over to the side door that leads into the kitchen. Nina steps inside, and there's just like a group of adults staring at her. No introductions, adults. nothing. They're just staring up her up and down. One of the house guys, I guess one of the house staff, looks at her and says, Do you want milk and cereal? I'm good. <laughs> Wendy's just standing there staring at the man leaning up against the kitchen island. He's looking Nina up and down, no, and then bro. he just nods. Wendy follows him out of the kitchen. And Nina's so confused, like, what the hell is happening? I mean, clearly they're analyzing Nina. They're looking for something in her. And when he gets back, the middle-aged man, Jeffrey Epstein, tells his assistant, you can take Nina upstairs. Nina was taken to the godforsaken room with the pink and green couch. Hell no. Where she waited. And she's just staring at all these naked pictures of girls that look way too young. And there's this wooden cabinet with toys inside. And it's just a freaky experience. The door swings open. And there is Jeffrey Epstein standing right behind her in nothing but a towel. It was freaky. It's terrifying. But she's also 14. So she's thinking, well, technically, that's how massages work, right? So even though Nina is not a licensed masseuse, because in the state of Florida, you have to be 18, she's thinking, this is normal. Jesus. He's maintaining eye contact with her while he takes off his towel and he is standing there in front of her completely nude. She looks down and his wee-wee is very tiny. <laughs> Side note, the word wee-wee was used with authorities, so that's why I'm using it. But also, it emphasizes how young these girls are. Epstein had a very stern voice, like an angry dad or like a scary teacher. It's, it's a voice of authority. You wouldn't even question it. It sounds that scary. He tells her, take off your clothes. What? Nina's so scared, she takes off her pants, and then he lays down on the massage table on his stomach. He instructs her to get on top of him to massage his back. And at first, it was as normal as a type of massage like this can Dude, get, this I guess. Like she's massaging his back with massage oils. But then Epstein turns to his side and starts rubbing his privates on her body. He grabs a device, uses it on her private parts, what the f and then it was over. He grabs a towel to wipe himself off down there and gets off the table. So he did not fully essay her, but it's still essay, you know? Nina was paid $200 for the first time. And unfortunately- 200 you're a billionaire give me more i'm sorry i'm my fault i know i'm just saying like that's that seemed mighty fucking stingy okay for doing all that extra shit. nina was just one of the many victims i've seen had he had a few ways that he would recruit underage girls for what i feel are assaults but he calls them massage. Kenji, f that i don't give a fuck, bro if i went over there bitch, and you're a fucking millionaire you, you're giving me more money bitch, or i'm going straight to the mother police the first way was to have girls recruit other girls children recruiting children under epstein's force and guidance that is crazy so wendy the one that brought nina to epstein she told authorities that just after she turned 17 her friend asked her to come to epstein's house wow that's how she got roped into this well actually her friend asked her you want to make some money i mean who says no to a question like that so she said yes okay all you have to do is give this man a massage and you're gonna make 200 dollars in like an hour Wendy goes, and just like Nina, she ends up meeting with Epstein in the kitchen of his Palm Beach house. And once he gives her the look through and the go ahead, she's escorted to his bedroom. She sees the young assistant, Sarah, set up the massage table, cover it with a sheet, lay this out the massage oils, bro. and then she leaves. Okay, dude, I can't do no more massage. Like, I actually get to, like, where the f he killed himself. She said, he tried to touch me. I stopped him. I told him, I'll massage you, but I don't want to be touched. Wendy did get naked for the massage, and at the very end, he paid her the agreed-upon amount of $200. When he realized Wendy wasn't comfortable with doing more, he offered her a new position to work with him. Bring him girls to massage him. Each time, he will pay her $200 for the first time. Just once. If the girls keep coming back, you don't get that referral fee anymore. Wendy told authorities, so that's what I did. She brought over girls 
who they all kind of knew what they were getting into. I mean, maybe not the full extent, terms and conditions and all of that, but apparently Epstein made it a point that he did not want the girls to be super surprised when they were in the room. And each time she brought a girl between the ages of 14 and 16, she was paid $200. Wendy worked with him for a year, and I don't have an exact figure on how many girls she personally brought to Epstein, but she would say... It was kind of like a train. It's like I introduced him to all my friends and then they introduced him to their friends and it just kind of went on and on. Bro, that's so scary. Out of all the girls that you introduced, how many of them were under 18? Under 18? All of them. All of them? All of them. Did Epstein know anybody's real true age or he didn't care? I don't think he cared. He told me the younger, the better. Let me just put it this way. I tried to bring him a woman who was 23 And he didn't really like it. Didn't go for it. It's not that he didn't go for it. He just didn't care for it. And he likes girls that are between the ages of like 18, 20, I think. Some some of them. But I think most of them lie about their age. I mean, I know that when I started off young, I think he knew better than to believe me. I think he knew that I was younger, like 17. But when I told him I was 18, it was fine. Most girls would lie when they go in there. And for the girls being victimized by Jeffrey Epstein, I guess there wasn't really a standard rate. Wendy would tell authorities... The more you do with him, the more you make. Basically, if you take off your clothes, you're going to make more. If you let him do things to you, you're going to make more. I heard about a girl who apparently slept with him and was making like $1,000 each time. No, bro. Do things? You mean like touch you? Yeah, touch you in inappropriate places. Wendy told authorities that she never blindsided the girls that she brought over. They at least had an idea of what was going on. And she would kind of know how much each girl did with Epstein by how much they walked out there with. So there was one girl on her first massage walked out with $300 and Wendy stated she walked out of that house with $300. So she obviously and evidently let him do a little bit more. According to James Patterson's book, police tried to make Wendy understand that she just implicated herself legally in Epstein's crimes. And she had been doing this for a little over a year now. So she was of age 18 now and she didn't get it. She just joked, I guess I'm like Heidi Fleiss. Heidi Fleiss, she was the madam of Hollywood. She ran a super illegal sex work ring in L.A. that catered to the Hollywood elites. So like she doesn't understand the severity. She doesn't get it, bro. It's complicated because a lot of people do try to demonize her in some sources. And I'm not going to say that she didn't do anything wrong, that she didn't help create victims. But she's also so young. Like, he has a way of picking girls, especially the Palm Beach girls, the victims there, of just picking the most underprivileged. Mm -hmm. Like, he knows how to spot vulnerability. This is a very smart man, you know? That would be the first way that he recruits victims. The second way Jeffrey Epstein would recruit girls was through Victoria's Secret. So remember that meme? What is Victoria's Secret? Some people would say it's, oh, the founder was a guy named Victor who loved dressing in more feminine lingerie. Others said, no, no, no. It's about the British monarch, Queen Victoria. She was always so prim and proper when she presented herself to the people. But Mm -hmm. she was known to be secretly very nasty, freaky, dirty, wild in her intimate life. And that is Victoria's secret. Whatever the secret is, the secret was owned by the richest man in Ohio, Leslie Wexner. He owns limited, well, he owned limited brands, which included Victoria's Secret, Express, Bath and Body Works. I believe they either own or heavily invested in Abercrombie and Fitch as well. I mean, it's a huge corporation. Leslie Wexner is worth $6 billion and has one of the largest privately owned yachts in the world. Well, he did at the time. It was 315 feet long, which... You know, I was like, that's teeny tiny weenie boat. Not that I own any sort of water vessel, but it didn't sound insane until I realized the Statue of Liberty is 300 feet tall. Big Ben is almost exactly as tall as Leslie Wexner's boat is long. Now, Jeffrey Epstein is rich. Leslie Wexner? That's a different league. Mm -hmm. Leslie Wexner hired Jeffrey Epstein to manage his money, but Epstein did a lot more than that, allegedly. He was kind of like Leslie Wexner's dog. So Leslie Wexner would buy these antique pieces of art for his house. Jeffrey Epstein would invite his former friend Stuart Pavar over, who is this renowned art collector, to come authenticate the pieces, which Stuart would later say they were mostly cheap knockoffs, like it was bad. It wasn't even a good knockoff. When Leslie Wexner wanted to break up with his long-term girlfriend, A woman who had uprooted her life, moved all the way to Ohio, converted to Judaism to be with him, to make him happy. Leslie was like, I can't do it. Jeffrey, go break up with her for me. 
What? He would send the dog. He would send the dog Epstein. Allegedly, when Leslie wanted to see Cats, the musical, but he didn't have time to go watch the musical, Jeffrey Epstein called up the cast, flew them to Ohio, and had them personally perform for Leslie. What? When Leslie finally decided to get married, allegedly, Epstein forced Leslie's soon-to-be wife to sign a prenuptial agreement, had her sign it alone in her law office, then he had Leslie sign it in his office, but he brought along a Sports Illustrated swimsuit model to show Leslie, remind Leslie, don't worry there's always an endless supply of beautiful women in this world and he had leslie sign the prenup agreement on the model's belly she laid down what? on the desk they put the papers on top of her belly and then he signed his prenuptial agreement bro like people with money like what the f are we talking about dude marriage to not the model <laughs> Yeah, but Epstein doesn't do anything for free or even for cheap. In return, he's likely getting paid fat sums of money for managing Leslie's money and his life. Mm -hmm. But also, in return for being this paid bully, really, he's getting access to Victoria's Secret models. Or sometimes, people with dreams of becoming one. Wow. Epstein starts working with a man named Jean-Luc Brunel, a modeling agent. And the two allegedly used Brunel's modeling agency to bring in underage girls from out of the country by promising them modeling contracts. Allegedly, the girls would stay in Epstein-owned properties, they would get visas, and very slowly, they would just be exposed to the world of, quote, high-end escorting. It's likely that Epstein used his known association in the fashion world to Leslie Wexner as a way to be like, see... I'm not a scammer, nor am I trying to take advantage of you. I'm actually best friends with the guy that owns Victoria's Secret. Mm. There is some proof of this. In Santa Monica, California, there is this very expensive hotel called Shutters. It's a smaller, intimate, upscale hotel. It overlooks the water, has this giant pool. It costs a thousand dollars a night to stay there. Damn. Will the Santa Monica Police Department get a call from that hotel one late summer evening by a young woman named Clara? She's frantic. She's calling to report that she's just been assaulted. She's trying to tell the authorities everything that's happened. She's a small actress. She did some minor roles in Baywatch and General Hospital. I mean, she's new to the industry and everyone is referring her to this guy named Jeffrey Epstein. They told her, send him your headshots because he picks the girls that are going to be oh, no. in Victoria's Secret catalogs. Maybe not the fashion show yet because that takes time, but the catalogs? That's your foot in the door. So that's what she did. Oh, no. He reaches out to ask, do you want to meet me at a hotel? Clearly, Clara thought this was weird because who meets up at a hotel for an audition? But she wants this career. And maybe he's just so busy that the only time that he can squeeze into his schedule is she comes to the hotel. He does a little audition and it's done. Clara shows up in Epstein's hotel room at the Shutters Hotel and he tells her to undress. What? He walks over and starts ripping her clothes off of her almost, saying things like, let me manhandle you for a second. Then he walks around no. circles pretending to evaluate her measurements in person, but he just keeps groping her the whole time. She stops him, grabs her clothes, runs out of the room, reports it to the authorities who do absolutely nothing. They did nothing about it. They told her, yeah, well, it is your word against his. Clara was terrified of going public wow. with everything when Jeffrey Epstein had all the money and the power, and she's just another small model in the industry. She didn't think anyone would care or listen. Wow. This would be the second way Epstein would recruit girls. But Jean Brunel vehemently denies being part of any of this. Brunel would actually go on to sue Jeffrey Epstein and state that his friendship and association with Epstein had cost him irreversible damage to his reputation and career. He stated, parents don't want to send their children to work with me because one of the first things that pop up when you Google my name is trafficking. Holy yeah. yeah. Well, he's dead now. Uh, Police tracked down. Wait, wait, wait. Who's dead? Jean Brunel. But oh, they died. He died too. Yeah, lots of people died. Wow. Now, in 2005, police tracked down yet another woman who gave Epstein massages. And it was so clear Epstein had a type. When police were investigating, trying to find anyone who had been victimized by Epstein, they came across a real masseuse. Now, interesting thing to note. She only got paid $100 a massage. And she gave actual deep tissue massages. Mm -hmm. When police asked, did he ever try anything with you did he try to grope you to ask you to take off your clothes no she said i'm not his type he goes for young thin and girls with no tattoos the real masseuse said that she knew epstein did <laughs> you tell me that if, but if i knew that growing up i'd be a face tattoo like mike tyson i swear to god i'll be walking around with the craziest tattoos i'll around just rip out a tooth for something don't look at my don't look my way mr epstein sir you're not gonna get this 
much tattoos because she had them visibly showing and Epstein would tell her multiple times to her face that he didn't like her tattoos. This whole investigation was really rough for Nina. I mean, her dad told authorities that they had a PI stalking their house, taking pictures of them, chasing visitors away. I mean, it was terrifying for Nina. She knew that Epstein was powerful, well-connected. Who knows? Who knows what he's going to try and do to stop her from testifying against him? Even during the police investigation into Jeffrey Epstein, the Palm Beach police force felt like they were being investigated. Wow. Which they absolutely were. They were. It's believed that Jeffrey Epstein's attorneys hired private investigators to look into the investigating detectives, which I believe is not illegal at all. Like they're entitled to do that. But allegedly, just as how Chief Ryder went through Jeffrey Epstein's trash, allegedly Jeffrey Epstein's private investigators went what? through the chief's trash. What? Like they're trying to look for blackmail material? Yeah, something to discredit them. Huh. He's clearly capable, and Jeffrey Epstein is one to play dirty. Epstein's attorney. All you need is my search history. I'm gonna be honest. I'm like, ugh, what the f what the f is this big booty Latinas taking how many? D so, oh my God, lock this man up! Like, bro, it's done. Provided prosecutors with evidence, That's pages mom, from Nina's MySpace page, specifically her About Me column, under best physical feature, Nina had written S and eyes. Ever drank? Ever smoked pot? Yes. Ever shoplifted? Lots. Ever skinny dipped? Yeah. Do you want to lose your Already lost it. Mm. Epstein's attorneys were trying to use this to discredit her story, which none of it should matter at all, but it worked. What? The prosecutor brought these printouts to Nina, shoved them in her face, and started accusing her of all sorts of things, and it just felt like to Nina, they were on Epstein's side. Epstein's attorneys basically argued that Epstein was just passionate about massages they said the massages are therapeutic and spiritually sound for him that is why he had so many massages get the f out of here this is crazy by the way epstein's legal team was insane i mean it talk about a dream team not morally ethically i think that's up for debate but talk about on paper a dream team this was it he had the attorney who represented oj simpson wow the grand jury recommended Epstein be charged with one felony count of solicitation of work. Nothing about underage women. Epstein was released were within all under hours age. on a three thousand dollar bail, and by that point, investigators had what? found thirty victims. They have thirty victims, but they couldn't charge him anything more severe. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Wow. Now, now, the DA's office went a step further. They gave Epstein a non-prosecution agreement, basically known as a sweetheart deal, where they stated that he would not be prosecuted in the Southern District of Florida for felony offenses involving abuse of underage girls. So what? You're making deals with a... F oh, my God. No. Oh, my God, bro. Well, what are we talking Epstein about? Epstein pled guilty to state felony offenses for solicitation of sex work and procurement of minors for sex work. And in this particular district, any of Epstein's co-conspirators would be immune from prosecution for those crimes. In this instance, Epstein was facing more than a decade in prison. But with this sweetheart deal that none of his victims knew about before he signed it, he would get out in 18 months. Wow. And because he didn't get much time, there was split reactions from the public. A good chunk of the public, including friends of Epstein, immediately cut ties with him. Whether they did that because they think this guy is horrible and he's been accused of doing heinous things or because they don't want to be associated with someone like that for their own image, it's unclear. But a big group started hating Epstein after this. But some, some people felt like, well, because he got so little time compared to what he was being accused of, it was almost a feeling to people of, Maybe we don't really know what's going on. Like, maybe there's more to the story. Or maybe he's guilty, but he's not that guilty. No, that muff guilty. I'm about 100% sure that bitch is guilty for sure. 100%. Yes, sir. No questions about it here. Epstein's old friends from high school still defended him. And one said, you know, this is, by the way, this is when you're 50-something. How the hell do you know what your high school buddy is up to and what they're like now? But he said, Jeffrey's a brilliant and good person. He's also incredibly generous. The problem in Florida, as I see it, is he got carried away. Perhaps he was hanging out with the wrong people. Carried? He was hanging out with minors. What? Another friend stated, I have a son who's dyslexic, and Jeffrey's gotten close to like him over me. the years. He got him into music, bought him his first piano, and then and as he got to school and had difficulty in studying, Jeffrey got him interested in taking flying lessons. Which, yeah, is very typical. Predatory men who are usually only dangerous to those that they see as prey. And in this situation... Bro, it doesn't even matter. You Like, I could, I could go murder someone right now and then go fucking... 
I don't know, if someone fell and I held him up, that doesn't make me a nice person. I'm still a murderer. You know what I mean? Like, dude's still a sex offender. The f are we talking about here? It doesn't make... Okay, whatever, dude. It was women and children and not those people who are trying to be his character witnesses. At this point, after the very first sweetheart deal, there's mixed reviews on Jeffrey Epstein. He was not publicly seen as the Jeffrey Epstein that he is seen as today. I think over the next 10 years, the public will shift. But immediately, in like 2008, it wasn't like that. That's crazy. In an interview with New York Magazine, the reporter talked to Epstein about his whole, quote, legal ordeal. That's what the journalist called it. Your legal ordeal. Not your sex crimes, your legal ordeal. And the journalist said, you know, it's kind of like the Icarus story. Someone who flies too close to the sun. Which is already kind of a bold statement, but Epstein responds, did Icarus like massages? Jeffrey Epstein- Uh- Motherfucker, how about flying to private islands and doing some crazy shit? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? How about pro uh, flying motherfucking miners out on planes, bitch? The fuck are we talking about, dude? Hell no. And alluded to the idea that his playfulness had unintended consequences. And he said, this is what happens with wealth. There are unexpected burdens as well as benefits. I'm not blameless. Since then, since his sweetheart deal, Epstein told the journalist he hired a board of directors, his friends, who would counsel him on his behavior. So kind of like a board of directors for a company, but for him, what? he also hired a full-time masseuse, a man. While in prison, if you tried to email Jeffrey Epstein, he had an automatic reply set up that would read, on vacation. Now, Epstein could have paid for the bail for every single inmate in the prison that he was in, but he didn't because he was very busy running the prison. It stated that Epstein's prison was so relaxed, he basically got a whole wing to himself. His cell door was never what? even really locked. He was able to move freely about what? in the common areas, watch TV, and within three and a half months, he didn't even need to stay in the prison anymore. He was free to leave for, quote, work release, meaning he could leave the prison for 16 hours a day, six days a week. He was allowed to have visitors, women, girlfriends female assistants that were allegedly involved in everything it was bizarre why is that is it just a very relaxed prison yeah. for rich yeah okay he only stayed there for 13 months he was released with an ankle monitor which sounds okay at least he got an ankle monitor right no he was still allowed to take his jet and go on work trips to all of his different homes and even to his private island for exercise he was allowed to take long walks around palm beach even in busy shopping centers for exercise so i don't know what that ankle monitor was doing oh his like legal team just did all of that for yeah. him and he's basically free he got like nothing I mean, nothing. Wow. The only America, quote dude. annoying thing he had to do, if you could even call it that, was register as a level three sex offender, which is the highest level and is categorized as high risk of reoffending. But it's Jeffrey Epstein. He's loaded. What does that mean to him? Nothing. And oddly, he's not allowed to watch X rated videos on the internet. I don't know. That's like part of his probation. Jeffrey Epstein was a free man again, July 22nd, How do they even monitor that, dude? Do they have, like, like, is there an FBI agent just watching his phone or some shit? Because I'm going to be honest with you. It, let's say I'm just starting to beat my m right? Just going crazy ham, right? What, like, uh, is my FBI agent going to FaceTime me? Just... You know what I mean? Mm -mm -mm -mm. And I'm just like, huh? Can I help you? Like, stop doing that. And be like, I got nuts somehow out my phone kenji i'm just saying like how do you even monitor that and enforce it you know what i mean and nine and for a decade he would live his life as normal flying between his private residences mingling with the ultra elites of society visiting his private island and creating more victims Yikes. he made victims after his first prison release he would meet women and victimize them he would meet girls and victimize them he would also hang out with Terrible. prince andrew afterwards and for 10 years, while he's free, the public is starting to slowly get more and more intrigued by Jeffrey Epstein in this case. A big part of that was one of the housemen that worked closely with Epstein tried to sell a list, a little black book oh, of clients. Well, he stated that in this list, named all the underage girls in places where Epstein had taken all the underage girls. Oh, he also alleged included a list of high profile famous individuals like henry kissinger mick jagger ted kennedy donald trump oh, bill clinton shit. alluding to the idea that they are doing disgusting things allegedly the house man tried to sell it for fifty thousand dollars which he was arrested for it because you can't sell stuff like that and he got 
18 months in prison. Ironically, the same amount of time that Epstein wow. got for his crimes. Wow, bro. What I mean, the say that it's pretty messed up for him to try and sell it because, you know, the girls' names are on there. But the fact yeah. that he got, the, like, his crime is, it's hard. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, yeah. Wow. And all of this would happen until almost exactly 10 years later, Jeffrey Epstein would be found dead in his prison cell. Wow. He would be rearrested and found dead with theories circulating of if he actually self exited or if someone powerful killed him or he how much did his. I'm going to be honest, bro, out of this whole video, this whole hour and 30 minute video. He does not seem like a person to take his life. He, like, at all. Not even, like, a smidge of it. He seems like he'll fucking go get vengeance for whoever put him in jail. He seems like, like, he doesn't seem like, he seems very controlling, manipulative. Like, I don't see him. He doesn't, right? Like, I just, I don't know if I believe that, bro. Hand woman nicknamed his madam, Ghislaine Maxwell. How much did she know about all of this? How much was she involved? Ghislaine Maxwell, the link in all of this, that is, she's still very much alive. And apparently she's writing a tell-all book in prison right now. And she oh, nah. is a fascinating character. Some victims seem to hate her more than they hate Jeffrey Epstein. What? And we will be getting into Ghislaine Maxwell and more on the island, the island on Sunday's episode. So in a few days, we're going to be covering we the crimes of Epstein's that. island. More victim stories on how they were quote trained on the island what happens when you try to escape the island and how Ghislaine Maxwell was Jeffrey Epstein's secret weapon so stay tuned for part two please stay safe and I will see you guys on Sunday bye bro we, we might actually have to watch that bro